I found this mower next to a dumpster at a school down the street from me. I can't believe someone would dump a mower at the school versus listing it on a free website so someone could pick it up. All you have to do is take a pic, post it up, and it's gone in under an hour. The other option would be to just leave it by the trash cans on trash day. It simply doesn't make any sense to load it up, drive to the school, and drop this off in the middle of the night. Talk about making no sense. In today's video, we look at this Toro mower and the problem is that I found it this morning and I don't know if it runs. But to be honest, by the way it looks, I don't think it's been used for quite some time. Now there's no damage to it, but I'm not sure why it's this dirty. Now I'm going to try and repair this mower, however it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. Now we're only going to mention what these other options could be, we don't have enough time to look into them. But if you need more information on these options, you're welcome to ask as many questions as you need to. Now I have seen other items left at the dumpster before, but this is the only one that I would care to pick up. There were other items there besides this mower. I think one was some sort of lamp and the other was a small dresser. It still amazes me the amount of effort that was put into getting this mower out of their hair. When they could have just pushed it to the curb, it would have been a lot easier. The first thing I want to do is look around the mower and see if there's anything obviously wrong with it that might explain why they would want to get rid of it in the first place. Now I don't see anything wrong with it, in fact, after taking a closer look, it looks like it has a full tank of gasoline. Who gives away a mower with a full tank? It also looks like the oil was recently changed as well. Now I'm really confused as to what's going on with this mower, it looks like they had it maintained and then decided to throw it away. Now for some reason the spark plug is missing, so before I can do a test start I'll need to replace it. Don't come after me too hard, but this is not the correct plug, but I'm just going to use it for testing. I'll replace it once I go to the store and get another one. It's just too bad the air filter wasn't new, but it's too clean to be the original one, so if I had to guess, I'd say it was new this season. The only thing left to do now is to try and start it. Luckily it started and ran for a few seconds, which means we have a working ignition system and enough compression from the engine, so it's not worn out. Yet again, I don't think it not starting because of a carb problem would be enough of a reason for me to just get rid of this mower. Now since I'm filming this repair and because this mower is dirtier than it should be, I'm going to remove the air filter so it doesn't get wet and give this mower a quick cleaning. Now is it necessary to clean this mower before I fix it? And the answer is nope, not at all. But with the plans I have for this mower, it'd be better if it was clean versus the way it looks now. So my plans are to either use it for my personal or backup mower, sell it on the marketplace, or give it away to someone in need, or to a local church so they can benefit from a working mower. I do have to be careful who I give the mower to, but more than likely it'll be someone I already know and trust who might be down on their luck at the moment. I don't have any issues giving it away to a complete stranger, but if I do, it'll be done online through a free website where it'll be listed as a free mower to someone in need. I have to admit, more than likely someone in desperate need of a working mower isn't going to care if it's clean, but the way I see it, they shouldn't be treated any differently from a paying customer who I find really likes seeing a clean mower. Now I did get a great comment from another seller who said that they'd rather see it not spotless but slightly dirty. I asked them why and they said it was more believable as a working mower than one that hasn't seen any service at all. I can see their point but I'm still going to clean it the best I can. Now cleaning a mower can take 10 minutes or it can take 10 seconds. It really doesn't need to take your entire evening to get it done. What I would do would be to use my leaf blower to get rid of the loose grass and then wash the dirt away with the garden hose and that's it. No need to break out the power washer unless it's one that's never been cleaned in its entire life. Now for some reason the front of this mower is covered in fresh oil, not sure why, but a viewer did suggest the reason the plug was gone was because they could have overfilled the oil in the engine and the oil seeped past the rings which pretty much hydrolocked the engine and of course removing the spark plug would be a great way to fix a hydrolocked engine. That idea does make sense, but the part that doesn't, is that enough of a reason to drop it off at the school? Now, I've always wondered what are the chances of the person who dropped this mower off might be watching this video. If that's the case, would you message me? I'd really like to know your reasoning. No judgment at all, I'm just curious. After cleaning this mower, I'm very surprised at how good it looks and the overall condition of this mower. There's only a few places where there's rust and I barely see any blemishes on the paint. There is one spot and to be honest it's very faint but fresh and I would imagine it's from when they were unloading it in the dark by the dumpster. 
Now I had the front of the mower tilted upwards to dry overnight and looks like some of the oil residue came out of the muffler and dribbled down the deck. I'm not going to worry too much about this because more than likely any oil left in the muffler is going to burn off once I get the mower up to running temperature. The next thing I want to do is to drain the gasoline from the tank. The reason I want to do this is because I need to make sure it's not stale. And secondly, when I remove the carb bowl, I don't want to drain more than a few ounces and not the whole tank out of it. It's just easier to do this way. As you can see, this gasoline is very new. At most, it might be only a month old, which means they could have put the fuel in this tank very recently. While the mower is on the table, I want to remove the blade so I can sharpen it and I also want to take this chance to clean the deck. Doing it this way will keep me from hunching over and hurting my back. It also makes it a little bit easier to film as well. To be honest, it's really not that bad under here, which means at some point this mower must have been cleaned as well. It looks like someone really cared about this mower to keep the deck free of grass buildup, to change the oil, and also keep it indoors as proven by the condition of the red paint on this mower. I still can't understand why someone would throw it away. Now a real test would be to remove the self-propelled cover and see just how much grass is packed in there. Very rarely does this cover ever come off unless there's a problem. And yet again, I'm very surprised to see that it's fairly clean. Whoever had this mower before, I want to find you and shake your hand. This mower was well taken care of, a lot better than even I could take care of it. Now the rear wheels on this mower spin fairly easily already, but I want to lube them anyway to keep the wear down on the wheel and the bolts that they spin on. You don't need to remove the wheels to do this part, but it gives me an opportunity to clean any rust off the bolt before adding any lube to them. In a different video, I tried lubing them with the wheels off or on, and there was hardly any difference. Once the wheel is back on, I like to give them a spin test to see just how well it spins. Now larger wheels like this one will spin a lot longer than the smaller ones, so this could go on for quite some time. If you're going to keep the wheels on, try using a light oil like automatic transmission fluid, but to be honest, any grease or oil should be fine. If you do use grease, just be careful because you could attract dirt and that will collect over time. That means you'll definitely have to remove the old grease the next time you apply new grease. I'll of course do all the wheels but I'm not going to show it because it's pretty much the same process including the drive wheels. I would recommend lubricating the bearings for the axles as well. Now after sharpening the blade I'm going to reinstall it and finally we're going to start working on the carb. Now this carb is really strange. The bowl has to be put back on in a certain orientation, so I'm going to mark the edge of the bowl and the edge of the carb so we can put it back where we found it. Now since the engine would start and then stop, because of this style of carb, the primer bulb is putting fuel into the carb's throat, which is what the engine is running on until it can pull fuel from the bowl. However, since it stops, it means it's not getting fuel from the bowl. That tells me that the fuel jet, which is also the bowl nut, must be clogged and needs to be cleaned. Once we get it out and inspect it, it'll let us know if we're right or not, we'll have to look somewhere else. As you can see, the openings on the side of the brass jet are clogged, which means the other smaller openings near the top are clogged as well. We'll have to clear the openings and also inspect the bowl for any further damage. If the bowl is in bad shape, we'll have to take off the carb for an inspection. However, this bowl looks fantastic. Besides some old fuel at the bottom, I don't see a reason to take off the carb, which will save us time. To clear the jet, I'm going to use this small wire to push through all the clogged openings. Now once I've gone through all the openings, I'll then use some carb cleaner on it. There are other ways to clean the openings, but use whatever method works best for you. If you have an ultrasonic cleaner, well, then you're very fortunate. I've thought about changing the way I clean my carbs, but I like doing it this way because it's simple and convenient. Before I put the bowl back on, I do want to check on the float and make sure it's moving like it's supposed to and that it's almost level when in the up position. If the float can't get level, I'll have to take the carb out for a good inspection. Luckily, this float is working like it should. Now, while trying to put the bowl back on, I'm having a hard time lining up the bowl gasket, so instead, I'm going to remove the gasket from the bowl and install it on the carb, followed by the bowl. After removing the gasket from the bowl, I noticed the remnants of the gasket on the edge of the bowl. I'll have to clean as much off as possible, otherwise air could leak past the gasket and cause issues for the carb. Just be careful when putting the bowl back on. Also, don't over tighten the bowl nut, otherwise you could break it. Don't forget to line up the marks we made earlier. If you don't, the float might not move enough inside the carb, and you won't get any fuel into the carb. Once the carb is back on, we'll try and start it.
So it started on the first pull, which is why priming carbs works so well, and the salt propel seems to be working great. After a few minutes, smoke started to come out from the muffler, which is expected since I was pretty sure there was some oil inside it. Another reason why the engine wouldn't stay running is what I mentioned earlier about the bowl being in the wrong orientation. If that was the case, the primer might still be able to push some fuel into the carb, but with the float not working like it should, the carb wouldn't be able to give the fuel it needs to keep running. So in the end, we now have a working mower that looks almost brand new. If I ever get a chance to talk to the person who gave this mower away, I'd really like to ask them why. So my question is, why do you think they gave this mower away? The oil was recently changed, the gasoline was fresh and filled to the brim, and after a good cleaning, it's not even rusting away, so why give it away? Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.